I realized that throughout this book, many of these stories, that's actually what it addresses is to let go of societal expectation or stigmas that are associated with certain things in our lives. Did you push record? Thanks so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Silka. Uh, Kristen Kaufman is with me for another segment on talking about recreating life after 50 and all the things we uh, learned in our first half, so to speak. Kristen, thanks so much for joining me again. Oh, thank you, Silka, for having me. Kristen, of course, has just released her third book in the series of Is This Seat Taken? A collection of stories where she really lets us into her personal life that you haven't done that before, especially with your proper Southern upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I kind of let it all hang out in this book. <laughs> no, it, it's, it was delightful that, and people will relate to that. As I said on our last segment, of course, we'll link to it. What I want to talk about in this segment is... Uh, and you, we've talked about this off camera, stigma, something yes. that, that, that stays with us, uh, that we carry throughout, you know, our, our adult life and how it affects us now. How do you release stigma? Yeah, it's so interesting that that kind of came to me, actually, when we were talking earlier off camera. I realized that throughout this book, Many of these stories, that's actually what it addresses, is to let go of societal expectation or stigmas that are associated with certain things in our lives. For example, um, I have never married. I have never had children. And I think being from Hot Springs, Arkansas, a little town in Arkansas, everybody got married and had 2.5 kids. And most people live behind a white picket fence. And I chose a very unconventional path in that I became a career woman. I opted not to get married. So every time the good old high school class reunion came around, I had this concern about, wow, I'm going to show up and they're going to ask me about my husband, which, of course, there never has been one. <laughs> and to be honest with you, Silka, I think people come to false conclusions based upon the lens through which they're looking at their life. So they either think, you know, she must not be easy to live with, or maybe she's a lesbian and she doesn't want us to know <laughs> or whatever. They come up with all sorts of assumptions. And I had to get brave about that and realize that that is the way they are making meaning in the world. It is not how I'm making meaning. And that stigma of not marrying and not having children um, it doesn't even apply to me unless I allow it or give it permission to apply to me. Yeah. For example, that's just one example. You know, it, it's, no, it's a terrific example. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, lots comes up for me, of course, you know, at the same thing I, I did marry, but uh, I didn't have any kids. And how many times, you know, every time that comes up in a conversation, when you meet somebody new, it's like, what's wrong? Well, there's nothing wrong. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. And yes, and a lot of women and men, are confronting that at this stage, you know, at this stage in life. Yes, that's right. And you know, the other example that I'll share, just because, again, I think your viewers or followers might find it interesting, especially because it's becoming so prevalent in the baby boomer arena now. And that is um, I received a diagnosis of hepatitis C when I turned 54. And I got that because back in 1961, when I was born, I was an RH factor baby and I had to have a complete blood transfusion. And this was before they tested out um, the blood sources, much like with HIV, the same thing was true with hepatitis C. So I carried this hepatitis C virus in my body for 54 years, Silka. And the only reason why we found it was through a routine rotary blood drive that I happen to give blood to because most physicians do not test for hepatitis C or didn't. I think it's becoming more prevalent now. And I have to tell you, my stigma, this was my stigma around hepatitis C, I associated it with drug users and, you know, promiscuity and, you know, all that. And that is 80% of the people that have it got it through a bad blood source. They didn't get it through some, you know, contaminated needle or whatever. But when you bring up hepatitis C, 
people immediately come to a false conclusion. They have a, a, an implicit bias about it. And so I decided I was going to go there and I wrote about it in the book for that very reason, for two reasons. One, let go of that stigma, because now that I've gone public with it, I can't tell you how many people will tell me now that their aunt died or their sister died or someone died of hepatitis C because it goes misdiagnosed or undiagnosed until you're stage four liver cancer. And then it's too late to do anything about it. Yeah. And that's one thing to let go of the stigma. And the other thing from a more practical application People need to go give blood just so they can know if they're carrying some big, bad disease. <laughs> because you can you can do that underneath the HIPAA law. Nobody will ever know unless you want them to know. So if people are concerned about it affecting their insurance or whatever, just go give blood and they will they have to let you know if you're carrying some big, bad blood disease. So that was a story that um, really I, I, I went there. Yeah. You know, I went there. Which was not easy to do. No, no, I, it, it, it's not. It's not. It, and uh, I have uh, several friends that have, have that are struggling with that have hepatitis C, and yeah, it, there is a he, definitely a hesitancy to share for all the wrong reasons. So thank you for bringing that up. That uh, it, you know, it's something again uh, that's uh, common, baby for the baby boomers and for yes. our age group. What other stigmas? Are, are there that people just or may not even realize? Yes. Well, you know, I, I will say, um, Silka, um, and you're, again, your viewers, because I know most of them are female or many of them are female. Well, we actually have uh, over 50% male audience. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, they'll relate to this because if they're married or they have children, girl, women, children or girl children, they'll get this. And there's a chapter in there. I did not entitle it Mean Girls, but there is a chapter about Mean Girls. Mm. And um, as you and I were talking off camera yesterday, you know, I have to be honest, I only had one Mean Girl experience in my 50 years on the planet until this, the one that I wrote about in this book. And because um, I was reared differently, my mom and daddy, you know, really wanted my sister Gretchen and I to always be kind. So we were kind, we were inclusive, we never ran in clicks. We were not clicky girls. We were just very live and let live. And we were in inclusive of people and we loved people. And that was thanks to my, my beautiful upbringing by my parents. That does not mean that you are not ultimately going to become a victim of a mean girl experience. So a stigma around that is, um, actually, I think I shared with you, I'll be very vulnerable with your viewers. I had to write that chapter about 12 times because um, my editor kept saying, man, you know, if there's a lot of emotion in this chapter. Are you sure you really want to share all that? So I had to continually edit and refine what my message was going to be about that. So there is absolutely a stigma about mean girls. Um, and there is, I think, a sacred responsibility for us as human beings, not to mention women, to embrace one another with love, period. Yeah. And we do not have to like everything that everybody on the planet does or says or believes, but we absolutely have a sacred responsibility to love one another with all of our differences and all of our idiosyncrasies. And so that chapter um, is entitled, you know, the, the courage basically to be redirected, right? Yes. The gift of being redirected. Because I do believe when people vote you off the island, <laughs> like I was voted off, they were freeing up a seat for somebody else to sit in that would help me become the best that I could be and help me reach my potential. Was it hurtful when I got voted off the island? Unequivocally, absolutely yes. Yeah. But I had to get over it and to say, wow, now there's been a seat opened up for somebody new to come into my life. And that's how that mindset had to shift. And it was not easy. No. Well, and again, uh, like we said in the last uh, segment, is when you bring up these stories, you know, it, it, so many things, just memories come flooding in, as I'm sure they will for other readers, that you don't even realize that you, it's, that's trauma, really. That's, that's a trauma that you experienced and that, that and people don't relate how important that is or how that affects your whole life until you deal with it. And that's, I think that's, you know, that's what we're talking about is now, you know, through your book books, especially this last one, how we deal with our past. Yes. In order to live our, you know, future as, as happy as we can and fulfilled as we can. Right. And I think the responsibility is for us to learn, you know, and 
So as my mom and daddy used to always say, when things happen to us or for us, depending upon your perspective, it's to teach us something is to prepare us for the next thing that's coming. Right. And so all of these stories, both the good, the bad, and the ugly, <laughs> were, were absolutely put on my path for a reason. And I believe the reason was for me to learn. And thus, that's the reason why I'm sharing it so vulnerable vulnerably with your viewers yeah. well thank you and it got this segment is it's already at 10 minutes so <laughs> i i'm going to hold you over for one more segment uh okay. because we didn't get to what i wanted to talk about releasing people that um, uh no longer serve you it's a, also a kind of a controversial and tough topic so we'll see you on our next segment our second act with Paige and silka bye <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Button's right over here. And for more videos on recreating life after 50, please visit our website, secondact.tv. See you soon.